Look, I want to go back to this issue of the Commonwealth Games debacle that I mentioned at the beginning of the program. Now, Victorian taxpayers are set to fork out uh, $380 million. I think it's going to be a lot more than that in compensation uh, to the three Commonwealth Games bodies uh, because the 2026 event won't take place in Victoria. Now, have a listen to the Premier, Daniel Andrews, and I know uh, uh, that Simon Love, who will join us shortly, was at this media conference. Have a listen to Premier Daniel Andrews announcing that loss yesterday. Terms of these settlement are legally binding and I am limited in what I can say. For instance, I'm not in a position to be able to talk to you about all the cut and thrust offers and counter offers, all of those issues, but I can confirm uh, a final settlement, $380 million, not a dollar more, uh, no court action, the matter is closed out and finalised. As I said, that means the Commonwealth Games authorities can focus on finding a host venue for 26 and beyond and we can focus on getting thousands of houses built for regional Victorians together with sporting infrastructure, tourism, major events infrastructure, all of that work that we've already announced, that comprehensive $2 billion package. Now, that's very tricky. The $380 million, not a cent more, that's not correct. That's the settlement with the Commonwealth Games bodies themselves. Uh, he hasn't included in there uh, the wages. Uh, th there's millions more. This is likely to cost somewhere north of $600 million, not $380 million. Joining me now, Sky News Victorian political reporter Simon Love, who did such a great job yesterday trying to get an honest answer out of Dan Andrews. Uh, he's, he's spinning this uh, like you wouldn't believe, as usual, Simon. Evening to you, Steve. Well, I think it was quintessential Daniel Andrews yesterday, uh, ultimately coming out and announcing on a Saturday morning, albeit, and, and no doubt the government will say that that was the earliest opportunity that the government had to announce this. But the negotiations have been taking place for a month, weeks. And at seven o'clock yesterday morning, we find out through a press release uh, after a settlement apparently at midnight uh, with the Commonwealth Games Federation that they'd reached this $380 million mark. And I think yesterday I found myself at that press conference uh, constantly trying to essentially be in the shoes of, a, of, of the Victorian taxpayer and, and say, is that $380 million the best case scenario or was the bidding higher, was the bidding lower? And ultimately the Premier said he couldn't say because the terms of the settlement were confidential. So Victorians will not know exactly what was claimed and counterclaimed and whether the Victorian government was on the hook for far more. And as you mentioned, the cost already on top of that 380 million, it could be going to the millions. I mean, I reported here on Sky exclusively a number of weeks ago that redundancy costs just for the staff in Jerome Weimar's agency were going to be, just for non-executive staff, between four and four and a half million dollars to pay all of those staff out of their positions. When you add in executive costs on top of that, which are still being finalised, that could be many more millions. And then, I guess, the cost too to many small businesses and contractors. I mean, I've been speaking to people right across the state over this weekend uh, in all different fields and walks of life about this decision. And one of the things that a, a well-placed source put to me is that there are many construction companies and Victorian, uh, Victorian businesses that would have been bidding for work or had contracts signed that ultimately may be able to get money out of the Victorian government uh, on this. And that's well and above this $380 million figure that you mentioned, Steve. Yeah, just briefly, you go back to the original cost estimate of what it was going to cost to stage the Games, and now they got that so wrong, they based it on the Gold Coast budget, uh, even, so, even though the Gold Coast was in one place and this was going to be in four different places. Everything went up, transport, security, the whole lot, and the people who made those dodgy uh, estimates of what it would cost in the first place, no one gets sacked, no one loses a job, and Dan just waltzes on through. Yeah, but the premiers, effectively, if I uh, you know use a, a fair term here, potentially even preempting what his auditor general, the state's auditor general, might find when they eventually go through the fine tooth comb of look how thick that is, Steve. Oh my God! That's the business case that was released yesterday at seven o'clock. Crazy and stuff. 
when the Crazy auditor general stuff. goes when the auditor general goes through that, right, and looks at the figures and drills in, it, it, it would seem yesterday that the premier Daniel Andrews was already preempting an outcome by saying that there may be learnings out of this, there may be reform for the Victorian government. And ultimately, in my first reading of this big document yesterday when it first came right. out, all of this was pinned on the Department of Jobs, Precincts and Regions, uh, which was under the then Minister Martin Pakula, and Visit Victoria, which is the Victorian agency that advocates for tourism that ultimately reports to the Premier. So I'm that was sure. the question I put to Daniel Andrews yesterday. Oh, Where does the buck yeah, stop? Yeah, and he doesn't answer, of course. I'm sure, Simon, when that report comes out, you'll be all over it. Appreciate your time tonight uh, on Paul Murray Live.